Hi everybody, it's Rosie and I am really excited about uh, today's video. Um, so this is um, something I've been wanting to do for a while. I saw this uh, tutorial on um, YouTube and I wanted, I've been wanting to do it for quite some time. So I think um, I'm going to be um, doing this particular spread uh, this Sunday um, for my small group at my church. So, um, and I don't know how well you can see it. And it's just, a, it's just a, it's called a gel print collage. And it's basically the teacher, she um, uh, painted on a canvas and then she took all of her um, leftover scraps of paper from her gel prints and um, using a, a jelly plate and she cut out um, fish shapes and then she just uh, pasted them onto the canvas, but she also did some bubble markings. So when I saw this, this just reminded me um, of the book of Matthew uh, when um, Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee and he saw Simon and his brother Andrew and he asked them to he asked them to follow him, and he would make them fishers of men. Um, depending on which translation you read, there's various. Um, my um, my book my Bible here says um, make you fish for people. So this is what this particular um, mixed media art project reminds me of. So um, that's what I plan to do, and so I thought I would do a video just to. Um, uh, give some ideas for my small group or for anybody else out there. Give some alternatives. Um, you don't have to use a, a canvas. Now let's see if I can. Uh... Um, you can. You could probably do this on a very small scale in your Bible, your um, your uh, journaling Bible, or you can use something like this. So this is a. I'm just going to show you here. This is a mixed media, and I do use this as like a faith journal. And this one is like nine by twelve inches, so you could, uh, you can use this, and basically do the same thing. You know, your water is here, and all your fish are swimming this way. So you can do it. You can do it using that. She uses a canvas that is sixteen by twenty. So this book here is, I'm going to read it again here, sorry, 9 by 12, 9 inches by 12. So it's a pretty big canvas that she had. And I got it in my mind now that I might actually do this on a large canvas because my art room is is uh, one of my favorite places in my apartment, but there's nothing on the walls. There's, there's just nothing on the walls because most of my art journaling are in art journals. So I thought I would be brave and... Um, do something on a canvas. Not too sure yet whether I will or not, but um, I think I will, and I probably won't finish it on Sunday, but that's okay. Uh, so anyway, um, the link to the actual tutorial will be in the description, and for my Facebook group, I'll have the link in the comments. So yeah, so basically she takes a canvas, and she starts with different um, hues of blue, till she gets to like a, a very pale bluish green and then white and she just kind of blends it in. So it's looking like water and then she does markings for bubbles so that there's some depth and some movement going on there and then the face, uh, the fish are kind of, um, I'll say moving upstream. So, and I really, really like this. I'm really excited to start this. So um, I'm just gonna read you from the book of Matthew. I just think it's a fascinating story. Um, so what had happened was, this was after uh, Jesus was tempted in the desert. And he had heard that John the Baptist had been arrested. arrested. So I'm just going to read, uh, starting at verse 13. He, that is Jesus, left Nazareth behind and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. 
land of Zebulun, land of the sea, sorry, land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, along the sea road beyond the Jordan, Jordan, sorry guys, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who live in darkness have seen a great light. And for those living in the shadow land of death, light has dawned. From then on, Jesus began to preach, repent because the kingdom of heaven has come near. So Matthew is is giving the account of the beginning of Jesus's ministry. So it goes on to talk to Matthew's giving the account of the first disciples. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, since they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets, they just left their nets, and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. So this is just, I, I have so many questions when I read this account. Each time I read it, I just, I'm in awe that they just dropped everything. Because, um, I mean, this was their livelihood. And it just, um, I, I just... You know, were there more details or was that just it? You know, because these accounts, um, they just, you know, the, the writers wanted to give you what they felt you needed to know, right? There could be other details behind there. I don't know. But I just think it's the most fascinating thing that they just dropped everything, especially um, for James and his brother John, just to, you know, leave your father and off they go. Just, just incredible. having a little sip of water. Okay. So when I saw this, this just reminded me of, of Jesus's calling to the disciples. It just reminds me of God's calling to us to build his kingdom, to um, make disciples of all nations to um, and it, you know, to me, it's not just about inviting people to the kingdom and telling them our story um, it's also about, I, I believe the kingdom of God, there needs to be kingdom maintaining too. When we have people come to the kingdom of God and come to the saving knowledge of Christ, people need support. They need other Christians. They need encouragement. Um, and as Christians we're to support each other. And that's why I love doing Bible art journaling ministry, because I believe it keeps Christians that I know, and hope that my videos will help people keep grounded in the Word of God. So this just, you know, there's just so many levels that this speaks to me. You know, um, uh, just that you know, it, there always seems to be, when, when Jesus interacts with people, he interacts with them at their level. They're fishermen. Um, and I just think of fish. I think of my father used to love fishing when he was able to. I used to go fishing with him when I was younger. I just love these fish. They're various sizes. They're various um, colors uh, with markings, you know, how we're all different. We're all unique. The people of the earth are different colors and we're different sizes and shapes and everything. Um, so it just, just, again, this this whole thing just... Um, it just speaks to me on different levels. So, um, if I use a canvas this, uh, Sunday, I'm going to put my Bible away. You'll see in the video, she just uses various blues. She does have like a C something that I'm going to get pick up. But I have, as you can see, I have different blues here. You know, I have some turquoise, I have deeper blues, I have lighter blues, I have something called paradise blue, and I'm going to be using those blues. I don't know which ones yet, but I'll be using those blues. Um, you, if you don't have paint and you want to do something like this in your art journal or in your journaling Bible, you don't have to use paint. You can use, just a sec here, put these away. I mean... 
you can use something simple, oopsies, as pencil crayons. You know, if you've got different, um, well, that's a green. <laughs> trying to find my blues here. I don't have great lighting in this room. But you know, just use various uh, different types of blues. You can use, you know, you can use your, your pencil crayons. Um, if I could find my, well, why don't we just use a piece of paper here? So let's just find, that's a green. You have to forgive me though, there's a blue. You know, you just, you would do, you would do, you would do the same thing as she does in the video, except you would just use your pencil crayons to create the water. Um, and then it, she uses her gel plate to do her markings of her bubbles in that. You don't need to have a gel plate. You can dip your tools for marking your bubbles and paint. You just have to be, you just, um, just have to be careful how much paint you're using so it's not so splotchy um, on your, whatever canvas you're using, whether it's your faith art journal or your, uh, journaling Bible, or you can use a white gel pen and just make your, you know, make your markings with a white gel pen if you have one, or you can just use some paint and a very, very fine, you know, very fine paintbrush. So I, she shows you the marking tools for her bubbles. And I'll, I looked around my, my craft room and, and found all kinds of things, you know, to make bubbles, large bubbles. This is actually um, it, when I have a dog. So, you know, I take my dog out for a walk and I have um, little doggy bags. <laughs> and so at the end of the doggy bags, there's always this plastic thing. Um, and then a cap, right? Um, I also have some bubble wrap from an Amazon package and I'm still trying to soak in water and get rid of all of the, uh, cause I want that side. So there's bubble wrap, a cap, uh, or, you know, this is just a little bottle of glitter. The end of this, these are the end of this. This would be good actually, cause this is cork. That would actually have an interesting pattern with a light layer of paint and then you stamp. So these are stamping tools or here. And then I thought um, what I did is I took a piece of cardboard, put these all the way. Talk about this in just a sec. I took a piece of cardboard and I took these pop dots. So they're, they're sticky and these are the things you pop out and you might put it underneath them. Um, a picture and, and stick it on a card and then it just it just gives it dimension um, anyway I'm not really explaining that right but anyway then I just stuck it on here and then I took I have a little container of baby powder here and I took to um, some baby powder I could have I could have kept the tops of these so it does so it's not sticky but I didn't want to bother with that so I de-stickerized them and I just took uh, some of the baby powder and I just brushed it over these little pop dots which are sticky and now they're not sticky and now I can just um, tap it in some paint. I do have a gel plate I'll be using it um, but you can just tap it lightly in some paint and then uh, mark your your project. So yes so this um, this is bubble wrap in an Amazon package, but uh, they cover the, the, the good part. <laughs> Cause I don't know if you can mark very well on the other side. So I've been soaking this in water for some time to get rid of the paper and then the glue that's on top and try not to pop these. And I'm almost there. I'm gonna soak it overnight again and try and um, get rid of most of this. So I could use, I could use this to mark also. So yeah. So then for my group, and if you wanna join my group, you can join me on Facebook, just put in a request to join the group. I did create uh, some fish templates. Now her fish, I really like her fish because they're long and they, they just suit the flow of this picture, the way that this picture is moving. Like I really feel that this um, painting that she did, this mixed media project, these fish, there's lots of movement in this picture. I'm really, I'm really pleased with it. 
So I did find a template and, um, and then what I did with one of them is I kind of um, just um, made them a little bit slimmer. So I just took a pencil and I just kind of made it a little bit slimmer and then cut it out so that they're, they're pretty, it's pretty similar to the ones that are on here. And I just made templates of various sizes depending on the size of your project and the size of your bubble, of your Bible. So, um, and then what you can use to do your collage. So this particular instructor used her leftover uh, bits of paper from gel printing. You can use anything. You can use um, uh, scrapbook paper, um, wrapping paper. Um, you know, you can just take ordinary paper, photocopy paper, and cut out your fish and color them with markers. You know, you can do whatever you want. Use your imagination. What I'm using, some of it, I might have time to play with my jelly plate. I have jelly plates, and I haven't used them very much. Anyway, so with my group last Sunday, we did something called um, um, print, uh, uh, print making with shaving cream. And what you do is you take uh, a shallow container and you fill it with shaving cream and you take drops of acrylic paint or, or some sort of ink. Um, and then you take a paintbrush or a stick and you swirl it in, put a piece of paper on top and then lift and let it sit for three minutes and then strip off the shaving cream in one direction. You have all these cool designs. So um, that's what we practice in my small group. So I'm going to be using some of this um, shaving cream prints um, for my fish. So these I did last night. This time I just smeared on the uh, shaving cream that was full of watercolor ink. I don't know if you can see the, I don't know if you can see the gold that's glittering in there, but there's, I have gold watercolor ink and it's all in there. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to use some of this. Uh, this is, it works with, um, this is white tracing paper. I don't know if I'll use that or not. I tried it on brown paper, so I'll probably use this. This was my first print, so I knew I needed to use more ink. And here's another one. And here's one where we just flipped the plate over of shaving cream that was full of ink and then, and then took the plate off and, and um, took the shaving cream off. So there's just, there's just a lot of fun. This is vellum. I probably won't use this in my project because... Um, so yeah, and white sticker paper. But like I said, you can use, I tried it on an envelope using a stencil, so I might use this. And I have some bits and pieces of paper I might use, like this here. And this is just printer paper. It's just um, stuff I printed off. This is a gel print right here. So I might use this. And I, I think I used... I think I just rolled on paper. And that's that another thing, if you've got a roller, you can just roll on paint onto your paper, let it dry and cut out your fish. Like you can use anything. So that's what I'm going to do. So really it's quite simple. Now where's my fish? So let's just, all right. You have to watch the video to kind of understand what I'm doing. So we're just gonna go maybe here this side so really now it's a little bit of work maybe there's a, a little bit of shortcut maybe you can put many sheets underneath but you just take your your fish um, <laughs> your fish template trace it And then just cut it out. And there's a fish that I can use. Easy peasy. So 
I'm going to fix a lot of my templates and just um, probably thin some of these out. Make one of these the um, the 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 fins smaller because in hers one fin is bigger than the other, and just kind of you know. And that's really all I did. And then I'll just cut it out. Really, that's about it. Pretty simple. If you don't have a printer, that's what I wanted to tell you. If you don't have a printer and you can't print these off, then be brave and draw your fish. Remember, take a look. This this is like fish cracker size. This is like a fish cracker um, shape. But take a look at this and break it down. There are two basic shapes here, almost like an oval and almost like a triangle, right? So you've got like an oval and then you've got a triangle. I don't know if you can see that okay, right? And then you can, you can um, just kind of sketch out something more. You might want to take out the you know, the ends here. Or this is also like the shape of a heart. So let's see if you can see me here. So here's an oval. And I'm going to turn this around. And then the shape of a heart. <laughs> Something like that. And there's your fish. You, be, be, be brave. Look on the internet. You know, uh, Google fish templates, take a look, draw it out yourself on some paper and, and cut out your own templates. Be brave because really it's just two basic shapes on this, right? It really is. It's just two basic shapes. So now if you don't have uh, acrylic paint, you don't have to use acrylic paint. You can use watercolor paint to, to uh, paint your water. You can use uh, pencil crayon, like I said, crayons. Or gelatos or gel crayons and we're gonna do that in just a sec um, gluing your fish on depends on what you're using I think if you're using a canvas I don't know if it would stick on if you don't have um, like gel matte medium like she does like she uses she uses something like a matte gel um, or oh, what is it called or Mod Podge I don't know if, if on a canvas, if you, if it would stick on or not, I don't know. Um, but I mean on, in a, a journaling Bible or a faith Bible, a journaling Bible or a faith art journal, you can just use glue. You wouldn't cover the top like she does. You just glue on the bottom and then you don't really need to, yeah, you don't need the matte gel or any special type of collage glue because that's what she uses. So. Uh, again, if you don't have paint, so this is my my first journaling Bible. I'm still not done. There's still tons and tons of, of room in here, but I'm just gonna we're just gonna practice something. We're just gonna um, I'm just gonna try something. And often, if I want to test an ink or something, I'll use these pages in the back because the pages in the back represent Bible pages. So here are some gel crayons. And this is basically watercolor in a stick. And I've got some baby wipes. So I'm just gonna try something here. I was trying something right there and that's okay. These are just test pages. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna try something here. I'm not gonna, it's okay if it doesn't work. So she's got that kind of, this is more like a purple one, eh? Yeah, let's put it on anyway. Yeah, it's like a, Don't know if this is going to work, folks. Doesn't matter. That's okay. Take a wipe, and I'm just I'm just seeing. 
and I think this was in here, yeah. And then we're just gonna, so the baby white um, activates Neat, eh? Now, I really should have something underneath that, and I had a piece of... Eh, I don't see it anywhere. Okay, so let's just keep going. The I think the wetter the baby wipe is, the better. The wetter, the better. Whatever. <laughs> so here I am, I'm doing the exact same, you know, I'm kind of just blending. When she paints, she blends her paints together. Gel crayons may not always have the, um, they're a little more muted in terms, I find, in terms of the vibrancy of the color, but that's okay. If you're using a, a journaling Bible, you may not want, you know, you may still want to see your, um, your scripture peeping through. And when she does her painting, there isn't this, there is, you can see that there's this delineation between the colors. She's got it more blended in. So I'm not sure how I can, I can do that. I'm going to use white here. I'm just kind of, I'm just, I'm just playing around guys, playing around. Because it's like what I like to do. Playing around. See, that's more of a purpley. I just, just gonna see here. Need more wet. And be adventurous and use your imagination, and it doesn't have to look exactly like hers. So that's blending it a little bit more so it's not so the colors are blending a little bit more in there I'm kind of liking that so yeah you can use gel crayons or uh, watercolors to do your C and uh, if it was this was dry I don't know how well this is gonna work I have to see here I'm getting my gel pen out and I don't know if I can this one might be dried out. I keep this because you can make markings. <laughs> you can do other, ah, here we go. So yeah, so, and I mean, you can make your own, oh, come on, you can make your own bubbles. It's, it's wet. Where is my, of course I can't find it. Anyway, you can just, these are just about out, eh? Anyway, you can just take a white, if you have a white gel pen and make your own bubbles around or make your own markings. You could probably still take a little bit of white paint and make markings in here. It's, it's still a generous uh, amount of room to do your Bible art journaling. So anyway, my point was you can use these gel crayons or gelatos, or you can use watercolor, Pencil crayons, regular crayons. You don't need to have acrylic paint to do this. That was really fun. I really like that. Because what I might do is that when I might do a smaller version in my Bible and still do my large canvas project. So I'm kind of getting excited thinking about having a large canvas project and hanging it up in my room. Okay, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So that's what I'm going to do this Sunday with my small group. These are just some ideas that you can use if you watch the tutorial and you see how she does things. 
um, and how what I try to do is I try to find tutorials that that can be um, adjusted to fit into Bible art journaling gives me inspiration and um, just adopt it um, if you don't have exactly what the person has on hand use what you have and I think that's about it I don't think there was anything else I wanted to mention I think I have everything I'm looking at everything on my desk so yeah I can't wait to do it with my small group um, and it, uh, I'm also going to share a link to a devotional on that scripture that you can read that talks about Jesus when he um, asked the disciples to follow him and be fishers of men. And what does that mean for you and I? Um, I think that's about it. So thanks. I know this was lengthy. I just love I just love to uh, help people try to find alternate ways of uh, there goes the train. I always say that alternate ways of doing Bible art journaling when you see a tutorial and you see that they have all this stuff and you don't have it don't give up take a look at what they're doing and what do you have or what can you afford to use uh, to do something similar lots of ins inspiration um, ask them questions ask a question what else could I use instead of because I find that these artists are so generous with their uh, their time and uh, suggestions. Um, so yeah, so feel free to, yeah. And I, did I talk about this? How I soaked it in water? I think I did. I can't remember guys. Isn't that awful? This is a lot of work. Don't they just sell this stuff in the dollar store? I have no idea. Anyway, <laughs> thanks guys. Bye.